Understanding the central importance of Zangabai places an even bigger burden on Andrea's shoulders. Her presence here is not just preventing elephant deaths, but the possible disruption of their entire way of life. Sadly, local opinions are increasingly affected by bigger changes sweeping across the region. Andrea is seeing more and more elephants entering the Bai. She thinks they're being pushed into Zanga as commercial logging disrupts their extensive network of paths. What's more, ivory is back in demand and the tusks of forest elephants are most sought after. They are pinker and much denser than those of savanna elephants, resulting in a rose ivory that's highly prized for carving. Its value is astronomical. A pair of tusks raises $90,000 on the black market. It's no wonder some local people get drawn into poaching. Human conflict in neighboring countries floods the area with weapons. The guards confiscate many of them, but there are plenty more, and they're largely pointing at Zanga. It's the easiest place to find and kill forest elephants. Unless, of course, Andrea is there. I will react immediately to any threat. And I can be out at the clearing having a nice afternoon and then I hear a gunshot and I'm gone. I'm back to camp on the radio trying to get guards motivated. In many ways, Andrea is the only person standing between the elephants and mass slaughter. After years of wanting to be here, she now dare not leave. Even trips to the local town could endanger the elephants, because she's under surveillance too. Her absence from the bai never seems to go unnoticed. Poachers are very localized. I mean, they live in the village. I know them. They know me. So when I'm driving out of town, they see me and everybody, I mean, people are going Andrea by the side of the road. So they know I'm leaving. And that's a worry because there have been incidences where there is poaching when I've been gone. 